Hey folks, Mike Adams here with the Downhill Boardroom. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can set up your own uh, symmetrical free ride setup. So uh, first, before we get into the nitty gritty behind, you know, uh, actually setting this kind of board up, uh, I wanted to quickly talk about the type of board that we're setting up versus the type of skating that you may want to do. So if you're looking to maybe skate and do a bunch of slides, uh, learn how to uh, 180, 360, do a lot of switch sliding, this kind of setup is gonna be great. If you're trying to just bomb hills and go really, really fast, you might want to go for more of a downhill oriented setup. Uh, this is going to have a little bit less grip, uh, which will make it easier to slide, but if you're, you know, going down mountain passes and you're trying to slow down a lot, uh, this won't have a ton of stopping power. Uh, so you may want to go for something that's more of a downhill or a downhill free ride setup. Uh, so I'll make sure to do a few other videos on uh, different variations of downhill setups, but this video specifically is for a symmetrical free ride setup. Uh, so this kind of setup is going to be great if you're Keeping it under, you know, 50 miles an hour, uh, everything under 50 should be completely handleable with this kind of board. Um, you'll get equal turning from the front and the back, so we've got symmetrical 45 degree angle base plates here, um, which means that you can pretty much just keep your weighting equal between both of your feet here. You don't have to necessarily prioritize a lot of your turning uh, or your weight up here in the front. It helps for stability, uh, but when you're learning how to slide, you don't have to do anything uh, unnatural or, or something that you wouldn't expect. You can just kind of keep your feet in between your trucks and it'll make things a little bit easier to learn. So if you're learning how to slide, this kind of setup is gonna be awesome. And we're gonna jump into how you can set yours up and what you might want to consider when you're choosing your deck, uh, your grip tape, footstop or no footstop, etc. All right, so what you'll need are hardware, optional footstop, uh, so either seven standard hardware, depending on the, the size of your deck, probably 1.25 inch to 1.5 inch. And then I'm using a PSD, a Riptide PSD footstop. You can use a bushing, uh, a cord wheel, whatever you want, just to kind of help keep your foot on if you need that. I've got riser pads, which are also optional. Um, I've got flush mounts and I just kind of want to use that to get the true geometry so I don't need that drop into the board. You'll need grip tape. Uh, this isn't enough to grip the whole board, but just this is what's gonna fit in the frame here. A uh, box cutter to cut your grip tape and then a skate tool to put your hardware on. And then you can also use this as a rasp to kind of score the edge of your grip tape. Or if you are not comfortable using your skate tool to do that, then you can get a rasp or scissors or something else that you can uh, grind away. You'll also need a deck, a set of trucks, and then running some round lip free ride wheels. So these are uh, 81A Drifts uh, by Blood Orange. And they're slightly offset, or actually they're pretty offset and they've got a nice round lip, so they'll slide really nice. All right, so first off is the deck and some considerations you may have uh, as you look for the right deck for your free ride board is going to be, first, what width of trucks are you going to want to run? So nowadays that like 150 to 160 millimeter width is super popular, you can find Paris V3s in 150 millimeters. I think caliber nine inches are like somewhere in the 160 millimeter range. So they're like not quite the old standard, which was 180 millimeters. Um, so if you are trying to run something that's a little bit, you know, narrower to match those trucks, um, then you might want to get something that's, you know, more in that 9.5 inch range. Um, on the other hand, if you've got, you know, 10 inch cowls or 180 millimeter Paris or something like that, you may want to go a little bit wider. Um, and, you know, outside of just matching with your trucks, you have to uh, consider 
how big your feet are and the way that you stand on your board. So like for this board, for example, um, if you stand, I'll grab one of my shoes. If you stand perpendicular, I've got like a size nine and I've got hang over both the, the toe and the heel, right? But the way that I skate is actually a little bit more directional. So I actually have my foot forward, which actually gives me the perfect amount of leverage over the heel here. I've got a little bit of overhang in the toe here. And I think this is like 9.3 something, so like a little bit. And I actually do enjoy having a little bit of overhang in the back. So this gives me my natural kind of uh, standing platform. So the Keystone V3 is, is really comfortable with my foot stance. And you can see like the rocker here sits in a way that will really pocket my feet in. Um, so the concave is something you'll want to consider with the way that you stand on your board. You know, you could have, just kind of grabbing my shoes again. If you have a stance that's more you know, like power stancy, like this maybe, and you're running like full ready to go switch or regular or, or you know, standard stance, um, maybe you'll need something that's wider. Um, also, if you want to run something that's like a drop deck, uh, that could be something that you'd also want to consider. Uh, it's good for, you know, spinning, learning 180s, doing big slides, uh, you won't have as much control because you won't be directly on top of your truck like a top mount. Um, but just make sure that when you're grabbing your board, you're considering your shoe size, your stance, as well as your trucks. Just because if you kind of mismatch those a little bit too much, you probably won't be really comfortable on your board. All right, so step one is going to be figure out where you're going to put your grip tape on the board. So I've got my board here and I'm gonna figure out where my feet are going to sit when I skate normally. Uh, some things to consider here are the concave of your board. So as you can see for the Keystone, you've got a bubble drop in the front, which gives you nice leverage around the ball of your foot and your toe for toe sides. Then you've got the back, which will kind of fit into the arch of your foot here if you've got it flat. So for me and for the board design, um, my feet are probably going to be just around here to here, maybe even extending that back a little bit in case I wanna have grip to here for when I'm pushing. And then the back, I wanna keep the tail gripped and then for tucking, you want to consider that also up to maybe here. So if we go here to here, looks like there may be potential for a gap of grip tape there if we want to save. Or if we just want to grip the whole thing, I've got enough here. I'm using the free friction grip from, I think it's Nate Blackburn and Motion. So this is pretty, pretty cheap. So I think I'm probably just gonna grip the whole thing. Uh, if you've got locked on, or if you um, want to save on grip, you could also just grip, you know, ergonomically where your feet are gonna be. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of grip on the nose to do like shoves. If you have a tail, it's kind of a waste to have a tail and not have grip tape on it. So make sure you grip your tail. Um, and this is also the phase that if you want to put inserts in, so, uh, if you've got like urethane concave inserts or if you want to stack your grip tape to get a certain extra amount of concave on maybe one side of your foot, maybe you'll fill in here since you're regular or since I'm regular, um, just to kind of get a little bit extra uh, potential like foot stop action going on, you could do that. But once you've got your first base layer of grip tape over the whole board, you probably won't want to go ahead and try and add uh, additional concave after the fact because it'll fly off while you're skating. Step two, we know that we're going to put the grip tape all over the board now. So uh, what we gotta do is measure that out. 
looks like the width of the grip tape is wider than the board itself, but if you end up in a scenario where you've got, you know, more traditional skateboard grip and maybe you have something that's like 10 inches wide, you can actually cut this in half and then just kind of add a little bit of a pinstripe for that missing width. Uh, ideally, you don't put that where your foot kind of stands all the time. The center of the board's a pretty good spot. Um, and then you can just flip the grip. For example, this side would come all the way back over here, and then you would be able to fill the rest of your board. Uh, so if you, if you have width issues, that's a tip for you. So what I'll do next is uh, I'll apply grip tape to this board in a time lapse, and we'll move on to the next step of setting up our board. All right, so we have our grip tape on our skateboard. Now, this is an optional step if you want to make sure that all of the wheelbase options are visible from the top of your deck. Um, I typically don't do this just because I have a preferred wheelbase option, but if you wanna see all the options that you've got at all times, what you can do is grab a piece of hardware and stick it backwards through your board like this. And you'll notice here, that bump right there, you can see where it is, right? And then you just go right on top of that bump with a drill, give it a spin, and there you go, your mounting hole. So you can do that with That will give you quick visibility into your mounting holes without having to go and do this on the hill, which can always be a little bit annoying. All right, after some gymnastics, we got all four back and Four front options are now always visible. All right, so now we are at step three, which is figuring out where we're going to put our trucks, uh, given the wheelbase options and the concave that we've got. So right now, it's a little bit harder to see the concave visually, but that front drop is right here. And you'll notice, as you look kind of down, into where I'm standing. If we wanna be a little bit further back, we can use the innermost uh, wheelbase option, or if we want a kind of power stance and stand on the drop, we can use that further up wheelbase. Um, I think I'm gonna go for something that's a little bit more 180 friendly, so I'll go for the inner wheelbase in the front, and then, if we look at the back here, I'll probably be, I might be like this, I might be forward. I normally skate this board forward stance like this, but if we're doing a lot of switch checks, probably more like this, I may actually end up putting my back truck in the back mounting option, just because that's kind of where the, all of my heel is right here on that back bolt. So that's what I'm gonna go with. It's time for us to go ahead and put our trucks on. So what you'll need here, optional, you'll have your risers if you want them, foot stop if you want them. If you're going with the foot stop, you'll need seven either 1.5 or 1.25 inch hardware, depending on the thickness of your deck. I'm riding I think a seven ply, um, so it's not super thick, so I'm going 1.25 uh, here. And then your trucks as well. Since we already know where we're going to put the trucks in 
the board. So we're gonna go inner here and then outer in the back. We'll start by putting on our foot stop. So this is an optional guy, but since I'm regular, I'll flip the board around. My feet are going to be here. So this foot stop, I prefer to be a little bit behind my truck. So I'll go ahead and take the nut off. Put that in and then pull it all the way back. So there are a few different uh, options here. You could technically put this in any one of the mounting holes that you're going to use. Uh, I've also experimented with putting the footstop up here, which would give me the ability to be fully up on the drop. And you can also kind of choke up here and uh, have the footstop kind of stop you from going all the way out. As you can see, I typically kind of run this thing fully bottomed out in the bottom here. Um, but if I wanted to get more on top of the front truck, I could go ahead and put this foot stop up here. Um, I prefer not to do that way, but uh, that's just the way that I learned. Um, I know a lot of people, especially riding Valks, prefer to stand fully on their front truck. So uh, depending on the type of trucks that you have and what you think feels best for you, you should probably put your foot stop on the opposite side of the board that your toe is on. So you can see here and here would feel a little bit weird in terms of functionality, just because if I had this here, just for visualization's point, I'd be way, way, way off the front or off the back of that truck. And then if I had it up here, I actually haven't tried this much, but up here, Honestly, not the worst. It's it's fine. I think visually it looks a little bit weird, but if you've got the concave there, actually it's kind of comfortable. So it really is just preference. I prefer the bottom left and I'm regular, but you should uh, play around with your foot stop to see what works best with the way that you skate. Once you've got this down, the rest of the assembly is really straightforward. You'll just grab your hardware, stick them in the other four holes. Then when you flip them around, if you've got your uh, riser pad, just stick that on there. Throw on your truck, and then you'll just put the nuts on here make sure that you're all good to go. All right, so we have our trucks on our board and now it's time for us to put the wheels and the bearings and the bearings on the trucks so that we can go skate. You'll need your skate tool and you won't need any special, you know, bearing press skate tools because you've got your axles on your trucks, which is awesome. So what you'll do, I'm going to run these uh, wide, these trucks wide. They've got a spacer in here that lets you run either your wheels wide or narrow. Since we're doing 180s, or that's the plan, I'm gonna go with double wide all around. So I put both of my bearings in here with the spacers facing outwards. And the reason for that is if I go ahead and put this wheel on, graphic side in first, it actually doesn't matter, um, but graphic side in first, I'll smack that in there. We're good, we're flush with the center of the core. This guy also, Give it a spin to make sure that it's true. And we can see no wiggle along this line, so we're good. Don't have to contact Cadillac for any out of the box issues. Um, so what we'll do now, throw this uh, axle nut back on, if it'll catch the thread. And then 
I typically just crank them. So crank them. That's cranked. Yeah, some people like backing off like a tiny bit. I don't so they can get a little more free spin, but I don't think that makes a difference and it makes your wheels slide less less good, less well. So um, just crank them, man, it'll be fine. Um, so I'm going to time lapse the rest of these, so I'll be back in a second. And there you have it. We have built a complete free ride setup. Now we can go and learn 180s and shove it and do big slides. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and tell me what you want to see next. Okay, bye.